All right, so now that we've added and subtracted and multiplied, let's figure out how we're gonna divide complex numbers. But let's go back to our college algebra days. All right, and uh, hopefully you guys remember that if I was dealing with something like uh, five uh, plus uh, the square root of x, all over two plus three square root of x, right? What we did, right, to divide radicals is we actually didn't do it. What we did is we rationalized the denominator. And so that is what we're gonna do here because remember what i is, i is the square root of negative one. So by definition, i is a radical. So if I had to rewrite this, right, this is five plus the square root of negative one all over two plus three square root of negative one. So in essence, what we need to do is we need to rationalize the denominator. Going back again to our college algebra days, what we did to do something like this is we used the conjugate, right? As you saw in the earlier video, right, when I multiply uh, a complex number to its conjugate, the complex part goes away. And that's basically what I want in rationalizing the denominator. I wanna clear the radical from the denominator. So to start this off, right, we're actually not gonna really perform the division. What I'm gonna do is simplify by rationalizing the denominator. So we do that, like I said, by employing our conjugate. If I'm gonna multiply the bottom by the conjugate, I gotta multiply the top to stay a balance and equivalent. So this problem now becomes 5 plus i and 2 minus 3i all divided by 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i. And so it basically becomes a multiplication problem um, at this time. So upstairs we foil out, right? So 5 times 2 gives us a 10. Um, the outer gives us a negative 15i. The inner gives us a positive 2i and then we get a negative three i squared. Down below, I'm gonna use the fact that it's the difference of squares, just to speed some things up. Upstairs, this part right here is basically a plus three. So with the 10, that gives us 13, and it looks like we have minus 13 i. And down below, what we have is four, right? Uh, minus nine i squared, which is 13 minus 13 i, this turns into four plus nine, which is basically 13 minus 13 i over 13. We got lucky here because everything cancels out and we're left with one minus i. That doesn't always happen, but uh, it did in this case. So essentially, in order to divide complex numbers, we don't, right? What we do is we rewrite it, we simplify it by rationalizing the denominator and then just doing a bunch of multiplication. And then if we're lucky, Right, the fraction, not only does the radical go away, but the fraction goes away. So that's extremely lucky. So with that in mind, right, let's perform the following divisions. And uh, when I do that, right, uh, again, we're not going to literally divide. What we're going to do is simplify by rationalizing by denominator by multiplying by the conjugate. So to be in balance, I do the same thing to the top and the bottom. Multiplying, we get four minus I upstairs and four plus i, four minus i uh, downstairs. Uh, the top is gonna remain what it is. Again, I'm gonna utilize the difference of square property. And so we end up with four minus i, 16 minus i squared. And since i squared is negative one, right, we end up with four minus i all over 17. So this problem right here, right, we end up with a real part of four over 17 minus an imaginary part of one over 17 i. So that's how that fraction would break up. So that way I know real and imaginary, I have my complex number. All right, so we're well-defined, all right? And so we just keep doing that. So in the next one, we're dividing by three minus five i. So to do the division, we actually multiply top and bottom by the conjugate to rationalize the denominator. So upstairs we have two plus five i. Downstairs I have the difference of squares. So let me go ahead and just cut to that chase. Oops. So upstairs we have six, it looks like plus 10i. And downstairs we have a nine 
minus 25i squared. So upstairs we have a 6 plus 10i. Downstairs we have a 9. That's going to be a plus 25. So 6 plus 10i all over 34. Right. Um, to simplify, notice that everybody has a factor of 2. Right. So 2 goes into there 3 times, goes into there 5 times, goes in there 17 times. So our answer here is 3 over 17 real parts plus 5 over 17 imaginary parts. And the fact that I'm getting 17 in both cases, again, that's just pure luck. That doesn't always happen as well. But hopefully you guys are getting the hang of it. Uh, last but not least, we've already done this one. So I'm going to stop it there, okay? Um, as we're in this, um, uh, there is a thing called higher powers of I. Um, what I'm just gonna do is just real quickly show you that uh, because it kind of will end up going and showing uh, this circular motion thing, right? So by definition, we know that I is the square root of negative one. And so that means that if I have I squared, Right, i squared is actually going to be negative 1. All right, so we've been utilizing that. If I go to a higher power, if I try doing i cubed, using my uh, exponents, right, this can be written as i squared times i. Since i squared is negative 1, it turns out that i cubed is negative i. All right, if we go to i to the fourth, right, well, this breaks down into i squared times i squared which is negative one times negative one, it turns out that i to the fourth is equal to one. I'll highlight that in a moment. And then last but not least, if we tried the next power, i to the fifth, well, this breaks down into i to the fourth times i. We just learned that i to the fourth is one, so one times i is i. And if you look at the beginning of this journey, we started with i, and by the time I got to the fifth power, I'm right back at i. So i to the sixth, is going to be negative 1, i to the 7th will be negative i, i to the 8th will be 1, and i to the 9th will be back at i. If we just keep following this pattern, so we keep, so i to the n basically is equal to plus or minus 1 or plus or minus i. So basically, it kind of circulates through those four values. And that kind of, uh, demonstrates the fact that I told you I comes up in situations where in circular motion. And I thought it's kind of kind of wild to demonstrate that by just looking at higher powers of I. Uh, some problems you might see in the future, right, uh, um, is, you know, how do we do I to 13th? Well, what I like to do is break it down into things that we know, right? I to the 13th is basically I to the 4th, I to the 4th, I to the fourth times I, right? Four, 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 and one. So all these are one. So we have one times one times one times I. So basically, I to the 13th is I. And uh, same thing, I to the 22nd. Um, you know, we can rewrite I to the fourth to the fifth power as I to the 20th. I'm just utilizing some exponential rules. So this becomes I to the fourth to the fifth power. There's 22 of them, so we have I squared. So this is essentially one to the fifth power, and this is negative one. So i to the 22nd power is negative one, right? And then i to the 83rd, oh my lordy, right? So let's base this and you know, this is basically 80 and plus three. So this is i to the fourth, right? Uh, to the 20th power times i cubed, right? And so what we get is uh, one to the 20th power I cubed is I squared times I. So I'm just keep breaking things down in terms of the nice powers of I, which is squared and four. This is one, this is negative one, and this is I. So I to the 83rd is equal to negative I. So that's how you handle it. And you'll notice again, we keep bouncing back and forth. The only one kind of missing here is a, 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 a positive one answer, but we keep circulating through one of those four answers. All right, and so that's how you handle higher powers of i. It's also how you handle division, which is the most important part here. All right, and so I'm gonna sign off and we'll go look at some uh, applications and some other deals with complex numbers. Talk to you later.